Jim, the question of the beginning of the universe is one that uh, either fascinates or many of us obsess about. And it's obviously important in a whole series of things. A lot of religions are based on it. Um, in recent decades, uh, cosmologists, physicists have come up with very interesting theories and ideas of internal inflation that, that seems to answer a lot of questions. You can roll the movie back. And so it looks like there is a beginning. You have a, a, a very famous uh, a theory, uh, Hartle Hawking State, mm -hmm. which seems to invalidate the question itself. And I'd love to understand how that works. This state, uh, the no boundary uh, state of the universe, right, predicts not just things starting off in time, but whole histories of, of, of things. That is, events, if you like, at a sequence of times. Um, so when people talk about the beginning, uh, we have to ask, what does that mean? What is the beginning of the universe? Uh, if, we, if we assume that the geometry is classical, so we have a well-defined notion of time, you can talk about sequences of things in time, and you can try to extrapolate uh, this is what cosmology is about, the history of the universe backward, backward in time. Okay. So how far can you go with it? Right. 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 It depends on what you mean by um, what you think the limits are. Uh, if you're talking about the classical theory of uh, general relativity, which is what we use in discussing the Big Bang, you can only go so far before the theory of the solutions, which represent the universe, develop singularities, infinities, in, infinities. Yeah. and so what that really means is that the theory has broken down. Right? Everybody recognizes that. This so is not controversial. That is quite early, right? it's like 10 to the minus 43 seconds after the Big Bang, yeah. and that's what most people are talking about when they talk about the beginning. Very early, back to the limit in which we can meaningfully describe a notion of time. 10 to but the minus 43 seconds. That's right. So that's way before inflation is supposed way to be. Way before inflation. You know, 10 right. to the minus 39th, uh, 36. And a lot, and nucleosynthesis. Yeah. Oh, that's even later, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. a lot of stuff works, yeah. right? Starting with very simple initial conditions, we can right. have a whole right. story right. about how the universe works. Right. So the question is, can you go further? Well, if you go further, uh, you're in the realm of quantum mechanics. Not certain space-time, but probability amplitudes for space-time. Then it depends on what the theory is. For example, uh, my colleague Thomas Hurta uh, and I uh, you know, calculated that you could make a quantum transition to a different space-time on the other side of this region where the classical physics doesn't, doesn't apply. So you can go through quantum mechanic. It's like sort of like... Um, sort of like magic. <laughs> it's a very simple uh, thing. If you think of... Um, the decay of an atomic nucleus. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like bound inside the nucleus and it's bouncing around. Yeah. And it um, can, um, uh, you, you, there's a sense in which you can describe classically uh, what's uh, going on inside the nucleus. But to get out, it has to tunnel through a barrier because it's confined by the nuclear forces. But it can tunnel quantum mechanically through the barrier and then behave classically on the other side. Mm -hmm. That's two regions of classicality connected by a quantum transition. Could the universe be like that? It could, right? where we have make a quantum transition to another universe on the other yeah, side. Yeah, but, but, but this, you're now going backwards, right? Yep. Right, so well, but how does that help us understand what happened originally, because it's uh, uh, symmetrical in time? It uh, depends on the theory, but one possibility is another, is another expansion on the other side. So what would, what would be the implications of that? Eternal expansions? Uh, so it would expand on both ends, yeah, right? right. Uh, unfortunately, uh, what also reverses is the arrow of time. Uh, yeah. According to our calculations, right. it's a very specific model. Uh, so the arrow of time would point the other way. That means we're, if there are people living on the other side... Right? They get younger. No. Yeah. Their, their direction of time is going towards the direction of expansion, so they would have as much chance of signaling us, right? To signal us, they'd have to go backward in their time. And they have about as much a chance of doing that 
as we have, uh, sending a message backward in time to tell people to vote differently in some election. We didn't like the results of it. Not possible. So they're effectively disjoint. So classical description, back to a very early stage, possible quantum uh, description, but mu not much help in explaining the universe that we have. So the core concept is that um, at 10 to the four, minus 43 seconds at this point, something has to change. And, yes. and, and does that something affect the totality of everything else? Or is it just a tweaking or an additional fact in current theories? Uh, what changes is not something about the theory. Uh, because the theory is always described by quantum mechanics. We believe that's fundamental. What changes is the approximation that it can be described classically by differential equations. That's not much of a, a, a real change. And so what is the fundamental implication of uh, the uh, hartle hawking state? Well, the, the most useful um, application are the prediction of the features of the universe that we see today coming out of the state because we get probabilities for those different classical histories. Even uh, just like in um, the case of the tunneling of, out of an atomic nucleus, you can describe what goes on outside, even if there's a regime where it doesn't have a classical. You describe it by probabilities. You calculate the probability of an atomic decay. It doesn't tell you exactly what happened, but it tells you the probability of what happened. It's the so same, same, same thing. Right. We can calculate the probability, say, for the density fluctuations that we see in the CMB, and compare them with cosmic with, microwave background. That's yeah. right. Cos compare them with the observations, the light from the Big Bang. We can calculate the probabilities that the universe is homogeneous and isotropic on scales of 100 megaparsecs. The same in all directions. Yeah. We can calculate um, the probabilities for the amount of inflation, as I sort of described today. All sorts of real problems, and that's how you test the theory of the quantum wave function of the universe against the observations. Not by having classical physics, but having an ensemble of possible classical universes, each with probabilities only describable um, at a sufficiently large time from the Big Bang. Not very much. <laughs>